Ихан. Okay, welcome back to the uh, session. So I was discussing about uh, this modulation process, right? As I said, in modulation process, the code word from the channel coding process is passed through scrambling, then modulation mapping, then layer mapping pre-coding. Output of pre-coding is mapped to resource element, then the OFDM signal is generated. So I discuss it till uh, resource mapping. Okay. So already you are aware what OFDM and all. So I need not uh, again say much about OFDM. So let me just throw some more light on this pre coding process. Okay. Uh, Okay, I was I discussed about this antenna board and other things. No? Yeah, so just to have more discussion on uh, decoding. <coughs> As I said, the output of layer mapping right goes to the pre-coding process. So here I have taken an example. Means uh, as I said, depending upon type of uh, uh, MIMO mode of operation. So whether it is single antenna or two antenna or four by four antenna, the processing will be done accordingly, either by uh, fixed or uh, uh, code book, code word, right? So uh, I have taken an example of uh, two antenna, right? So here yeah, the pre-coding is done, let's say, this is the input from layer mapping goes to two antennas and these two antennas are spaced at uh, uh, lambda by two apart. So at one antenna, I get uh, two signals. Yes, this antenna one signal, this another signal, they are in phase. So it will be added up and I will be getting this. And uh, I get here out of phase. So when I add these two, it will cancel out. So the out of this is the uh, pre-coding mode. Uh, as I said, this uh, pre-coding in LD that depends on special multiplexing, right? So I said code book for pre-coding. I've taken here example of uh, two transmission antenna, right? So this is a code book index and is a number of layers. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I said, it uh, can be operated either in open loop or closed loop MIMO. So just to say what open loop and closed loop MIMO is, in case of open loop MIMO, uh, it won't require any uh, channel knowledge at the transmitter side. Okay, so no channel knowledge at the transmitter side is required in case of open loop MIMO. So we say R is the received uh, signal will be equal to H, S plus N. H is a channel uh, matrix, right? S is a signal and plus N is a noise. So channel status, uh, CSI is not required in case of open loop uh, MIMO. But in case of uh, closed loop MIMO, so it requires the channel knowledge at the transmitter side. So that is why we write R is equal to H W S plus N. So uh, as I said, W is a what uh, pre-coding matrix, right? This is a channel matrix, this is a signal matrix, plus noise. So here there is no feedback from 
user equipment of the env in case of open loop but in case of closed loop so there is a feedback from user equipment to the env right so means the channel state information is required so adaptive precoding matrix so that is a pre equalization so transmission modes uh, even here i think i said about transmit diversity right with the two antennas so code word is applied here so there are multiple uh, receive antennas will be there so what channel is used i am saying here pdcs transmission we have two or four antenna ports and uh, this is a pdcs indication or a dc format one or one here <coughs> so your code word is sent redundantly over several streams that is what in transmit diversity means multiple uh, the same code word will be transmitted over multiple channels means multiple that is what is saying code word is sent redundantly over several streams so here no feedback regarding antenna selection or pre coding is needed in this case so just to expand about spatial multiplexing i have taken a single input single output and another case is multiple input and multiple output so I think this already I discussed about antenna ports, and uh, yeah, this is what about mapping I said. Then uh, resource mapping also I done. So next is the OFDM baseband signal generation. I will look about uh, the equation, the time down expression for OFDM signal generation. So I'm not written here, and uh, you know what FFP size we use for uh, if the subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz. So if the subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz, we use uh, an FFP size of 2048, and we use uh, uh, a sub, uh, it's an FFP size of 4096 if the subcarrier spacing is 7.5 kilohertz. And uh, here I have written the uh, cyclic prefix length, okay, for uh, different types of CP. That is for normal CP. I said the subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz and the CP length will be 160 bits uh, for L equal to 0. So for L equal to 0 means uh, uh, in 0th slot first symbol, right, 0, that is uh, slot 0. In that the cyclic prefix length is 160. For uh, rest of the this one, it will be 144. Okay, CP length will be 144. For extended CP, okay, for uh, 0 to 5 slots, the CP length is uh, 512 when the subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz and it will be 1024, okay, for a subcarrier spacing of 7.5 kilohertz. Uh, already I discussed about frame structure of uh, LD, both FTD and TDD. So I think you can have a look about that and you should understand that in uh, uh, first time slot, right? The cyclic prefix length will be of 160 bits. Okay, the length of the cyclic prefix is 160. For the subsequent uh, slots, the cyclic prefix length will be of 144 for normal CP. Okay, for extended CP, uh, it will be 512 for uh, a subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. Right, and it will be 1024 for uh, these three slots. Okay. So this is what uh, the OFDMA signal generation with n users, so user one data, user two data, and so on up to user n data that will be resource mapping, right? So up to resource mapping, I said, right? Then output of this resource mapping is applied is the what OFDM generation, right? So that will be passed through IFFT. So here the signal will be in frequency domain. So I use IFFT 
to get back the signal in the time domain, right? And these are the cyclic prefix, so which are added to avoid the inter-symbol interference among the OFDM symbols. Then parallel to serial conversion is then, then we'll be getting back the OFDM signals. And that will be transmitted over the air. Okay, so this is all about, uh, I think I can say about downlink uh, transport channel passing. Okay, starting, as I said, it has two steps. One is channel coding and second one is modulation process. So till this, it comes under the modulation process. So next, let us discuss about uh, MIMO. That is multiple input, multiple output in LTE. Okay. Um, I think uh, I will come back to this slide later because uh, it has something different, it means single user MIMO, multi user MIMO, and cooperative MIMO. So these are the three different broad categories of MIMO single user, multiple input, multiple output, multi user, multiple input, multiple output, and uh, cooperative, multi cooperative, multiple input, multiple output. So what it is and all, I will come back to this slide later on, but I should, I need to tell about the basics of MIMO. So let me say, these are the different varieties of MIMO. That is single input, single output. I have written here, transmit antenna, the channel radio, and receive antenna. So there will be a single transmitting antenna and single receiving antenna. This is known as a single input and single output. Okay, next one is, uh, uh, single input and multiple outputs means only one transmit antenna will be there so multiple receive antennas will be there and next one is multiple input single output uh, that is so multiple transmit antennas multiple antennas at the transmitter side and only single antenna at the receiver side so this we say transmit diversity okay so transmit diversity means the more than one antenna will be used at the transmitter side Okay, only one antenna will be used at the receiver side. So receive diversity means only single antenna will be there at the transmitter side and multiple receive antennas will be there at the receiver side. So this is what single input, multiple output. It is known as receive diversity. Okay, the last one is MIMO. That is multiple input, multiple output. Means we use uh, multiple antennas at the transmitter and multiple antennas at the receiver side. So in this MIMO only, again I said there are three categories, right? Single user MIMO, multi user MIMO, and then cooperative use, user MIMO. Okay. Uh, so here, single user uh, means one user gets the full benefit of the increased capacity, right? Means that is, uh, I think what I can say, single user MIMO is an example of downlink in LTE. Okay and uh, multi-user MIMO means uh, the base station schedules two mobiles to transmit their own data streams but as a MIMO signal so example is uplink in LTE means from up uplink that is multiple users will be transmitting signals to the ENB right that is what that is multi-user MIMO so then uh, next is cooperative MIMO so this code in MIMO involves two separate entities at the transmission end. So example is a downlink case in which two ENB will collaborate by sharing data streams to record the spatially separate antennas for optimal communication with the, at least one user equipment. Okay. So actually this uh, cooperative MIMO is used in uh, advanced LTE. So just to have again what single user MIMO is, what multi user MIMO is, and what cooperative or multi user MIMO is. So let me say what MIMO is in detail as per your uh, syllabus. So multiple antennas at the transmitter and receiver is the MIMO concept. So why do I go for MIMO? So it provides high robustness. Via space time block codes. Okay. 
and uh, it increases the rate via spatial multiplexing. So this is what is a spatial multiplexing one happens, right? And it can be extended for multi-user MIMO, single user MIMO, then cooperative multi-user MIMO, right? So it serves multiple simultaneous users via spatial division multiple access, what I can say. So over the same bandwidth and the same time slot, so more antennas. See, the input data stream here at the transmitter side, pre-processing will be done. So different RF, RF1, RF2 and so on. So each antenna on RF and this is the wireless channel. What I can say the MIMO system is this, right? So from one transmitter, you can see here two transmitter and two receivers, right? So this receiver can receive signal from both the transmitting antennas, RF1 and RF2 also. So I say H11 is uh, the channel gain from and transmitting antenna one to the receiving antenna one. Uh, So this is what the MIMO is <coughs> and at the receiver side, post-processing is done. See the Y, means output of the channel can be written as HS plus N. So H is the channel matrix. So channel matrix was this one, H11, H12, H21 and H22, right? And S is the signal vector plus N is the noise. So this is a multiplexing now performance is uh, dependent on the propagation conditions. <coughs> In brief to say what MIMO is, it has multiple antennas at the transmitter side and multiple antennas at the receiver side. Okay. So it is possible to have high robustness with the uh, space time block codes and it increases the rate, data rate via spatial multiplexing. Okay, I think uh, again I repeated the slide. So, MIMO is defined by the number of transmit receiver antennas, right? And not by the mode which is supported, means whether it supports uh, <coughs> single user, multi user, and all, right? So, in case of single user SISO, I said uh, single input, single output, one transmit antenna, and the transmitter, one receiver antenna at the receiver, right? So, this is the typical uh, wireless system today and uh, in case of MISO means I can have multiple antennas at the transmitter side only one antenna at the receiver side. So I said this provides transmit diversity is the more right. So again in transmit diversity this maximum ratio combining is one method and uh, that is space time or frequency time coding is used here. The next one is SIMO. SIMO means single input, multiple output. I said this is the receive diversity, right? Uh, means one antenna at the transmitter side and multiple antennas are at the receiver side. And MIMO is what? Multiple antennas at the transmitter side and multiple antennas at the receiver side. So, means in uh, MISO, I get transmit diversity. In CMO, I get uh, receive diversity. In MIMO, it is possible to get both transmit and receive diversity. Okay. So, spatial multiplexing, also known as space division multiplexing, that is a true MIMO. Okay. So, it is. This is space division multiple access, SDMA, is also known as multi user MIMO. The actually virtual my own so on is used for beam farming okay so this is in uh, I shall have a broad picture about different types of uh, MIMOs single input single output multiple input single output single input multiple output and multiple input multiple output okay. so from each uh, we get some advantages. 
So in case of uh, uh, what is the first one? This is a MIMO, right? Multiple input and multiple output. So two lines are shown. This side and two lines are set. So this provides transmit diversity and receive diversity, as well as beam farming is also possible. So with this technique, I will be able to have better signal to noise ratio. So this is only uh, I think multi-user MIMO. So this increases the uh, throughput at node E node B, okay. and this is a spatial multiplexing. Okay. That is transmit diversity. This increases throughput at the user equipment. Okay. So to understand further about this MIMO, I said uh, so. Data stream one, which is generated the X one of T, will be applied to the transmitter one. And data stream two, which is denoted mathematically as X2 of T, is applied to the transmitting antenna two. So already I said this is H11, H12, then H21, and H2. This is the channel matrix. This is the MIMO system, right? So at the receiver side, I call the received symbol to receiving antenna as Y1 of T and to another antenna as Y2 of T. So those two will be applied to the DSP process processing. Post processing, I said, right, in the previous time. So that is done by using DSP, this is the processing. Then I will be getting back uh, two output data streams, data stream one and data stream two. So this is with a little bit mathematical, this one, right? Uh, see, I said Y, Y is what? output of the uh, channel matrix, right? which is equal to H, X. Here I am assuming there is no noise. There is a, I am not at a plus N. Okay. So this is H is the channel matrix and X is the transmitted data, right? And Y is the received data. Okay? Again, this is a vector. So here Y1 of T, Y2 of T is there, right? So Y1, Y2. So that is one matrix and H, again, this is a H matrix that is uh, here with the two transmit antennas and two receive antennas. I get this H11, H12, H21, and H22. And the received uh, this is a transmitted symbol. I have two streams, right? X1 of T and X2 of T. So that is why this is in the form of vector. Y is equal to HX. Okay, X is again X1, X2. Okay. I hope, I think you can note down this. This is very much as per your syllabus, what I can say. <coughs> Plus n always will be there. There is a noise. You what we call as a additive Gaussian noise. I hope it is clear now. Is it visible? Clarity is there. No, all now noted. So the received data y is equal to h x plus n will be there. So as I said, the received data y in terms of a vector matrix, I can write this y1, y2, h is the channel matrix. That is uh, h11, h12, h21, h22, and x is the transmitted symbol. It is also a vector x1, x2. So receive diversity, receiver diversity, transmit diversity, both are there. Let us see the first one, receiver diversity. So receive diversity means what? There will be one transmitting antenna at the transmitter side 
and we will be having multiple antennas at the receiver side. So the signals received from different paths okay, from transmitter side will be processed by using and uh, best one will be selected from that. Means, see when I when I have n number of antennas at the receiver side, so which antenna will be able to receive the best signal? So that will be selected. So select best antenna among them. That is the received diversity. And uh, that is decided based upon this uh, signal, received signal strength. So here I have written uh, three different signals. So among that, so which is having a higher strength that antenna will be received. And uh, in that the process is known as maximal ratio combining that is known as mrc right so this is what mrc is the transmitter side it will be transmitting the signal so in wireless channel it will pass through different paths so that is the receiver side right so from the receiving antenna each received signal will be weighted by the weighting factor w1 w2 and so on wn among this, the best one will be selected. This is a select combiner. So, what the maximum ratio, ratio combining is? Okay. I can say y is equal to hx plus n. So, that weight factor, so wi, what I have written here, w1, w2, and so on up to wn, that is the weighing factor, weight factor. Right? So, it is chosen based on each branch signal strength such that the overall combined output signal to noise ratio increases okay. and uh, see that uh, w i i think while uh, telling about pre-coding i said y i is equal to w i into x i right so w i is the formula so h i divided by root of sigma k s k square so then mrc output that is maximal Ratio combining output is given as that is x tied. Okay, x tied is equal to sigma is 1 to m w i into y. So w i is the weight factor, y i is the received signal vector. And uh, that is about uh, received diversity. So in received diversity, the technique is MRC. Uh, two techniques are the, right, the MRC. <laughs> And uh, next is the transmit diversity. So in transmit diversity, what I said, uh, multiple antennas will be used at the transmitter side and only one antenna will be used at the receiver side. So transmit diversity, we use here space-time codes. Yeah. The uh, known code is Almaty code. So data stream, X1 of T and X2 of T with two transmit antennas, right? So the receiver side is X, Y0 will be equal to root of S by 2 of H0, S0 plus H1, S1 plus N0. Means this is H0 if I can say this as H0 and this as H1, right? So this is the received symbol, right? root of S by 2, that is the magnitude, and H0, S0, then H1, S1 plus N0 is the noise. Only for y1, so it is a complex conjugate of that. So root of s by 2 minus s0 s1 complex conjugate plus h1 s0 conjugate plus n the noise. So this will be written in terms of matrix form like this. So y0 and y1. Yes, uh, only I need to receive one signal. So that y0 and y1 is the complex conjugate of y0. It is the in matrix form I written. So y equal to h, this is the h matrix, channel matrix, and uh, s not s1 plus noise. So transmit diversity in LTE. Okay, so, so the previous case is the space time block code, space time code, right? So here, see the incoming data sequence. Okay, so incoming data sequence, then like X0, X1, S, and so on, is passed to SFDC, this space frequency block code. 
So output of that will be having what uh, two sequences. X, right? Is written here. It is one through antenna port zero and antenna port one. These are two different sequences. It is the space domain and with the different antenna ports, antenna port zero and is antenna port one. So here yeah, this is the data stream, right? Input data stream x0, x1, and so on up to xn minus 1 is a bit stream to transmit, right? Through antenna 1 and antenna 2 to provide a, a transmit diversity, right? And these antennas are separated by a wavelength of lambda by 2. So I get uh, uh, two data streams, right? <coughs> and <coughs> subcarrier 1 and subcarrier 2, and those are separated in frequency. Is separated by frequency between the subcarriers. I don't know whether is it visible or not. So this is in frequency domain, x naught and so on. Okay. Line. So this is frequencies which are transmit diversity. Okay, with uh, four by four antenna cities. Already I discussed this in pre coding. Okay. So, without pre coding, I can write the received signal as y is equal to uh, hx plus n. And with pre coding, I can write y equal to hs h plus n. So, this hs is the w into x. So, w is the what pre coding matrix I said. And this w in simple form, it will be h inverse. Okay. okay. This h inverse when the pre-coding matrix will be equal to inverse of the channel matrix, it does not mean that it will cancel out the impact of the channel, but it aligns the vector containing the transmit symbol with the eigenvector of the channel. Okay. So to say in simple words, it transforms the transmit symbols vector in such a way that the vector reaches the receiver in the strongest form that is possible in the given channel. This is what uh, the pre-coding in LTE, okay. Uh, okay, again here, uh, there are two different types of uh, spatial multiplexing. One is open loop, another one is uh, closed loop. Okay, let us have what is, uh, what do you mean by open loop spatial multiplexing with CDD. So CDD means cyclic delay diversity, it is cyclic delay diversity. So CDD is a kind of transmit diversity mechanism implemented by applying a different phase delay okay a different phase delay for each OFDM subcarrier so i hope you understand what i am saying uh, cdd means cyclic delay diversity so it is a kind of transmit diversity mechanism implemented by applying a different phase delay that is a cyclic phase delay for each OFDM subcarrier so that is what shown here. So this is the uh, this is a incoming data stream. So it will be one will be connected directly to the antenna. Another will be done with cyclic shift, yes. right? So at the receiver side, see here this is the word cyclic prefix and this is a symbol. So it is used in spatial multiplexing to increase the diversity between the two spatial paths. Uh, so CDD is used for that. Mm -hmm to increase the diversity between the two spatial paths, the CDD is used. So what CDD is? It is a cyclic delay diversity. Uh, this is with uh, mathematical, uh, this one, right? So pre-coding in CDD, that open loop spatial multiplexing with CDD. So this is the received signal vector, right to the power of zero of i, I wrote there, right? So the weight is power of p minus one of i. So means how many antenna ports are there? So w into di. And this is a received I mean, this is a transmitter signal vector. It is. So there are number of layers, and uh, this is u, and this is the data sequence. <coughs> and so this is about the calculation. How the pre-coding CDD calculations are done. This is with the port zero. So y1 to the power of zero from y port zero. 
and y1 to the power of 1 is root from the port 1, that is antenna ports. Right? And this is the sequence d u multiplied, this is the transmitted uh, symbol, layer 2, layer 0, and layer 1. Okay, so in layer mapping, I said two layers. Yes. Fine. So, see between these two sequences, right? I said in CDD, cyclic uh, uh, delay diversity, right? So, there, see, these two sequences will have 180 degree phase shift, and these two will have 0 degree phase difference, right? x1 to the power of 0 and uh, minus x1 to the power of 0. So, it indicates there is a phase shift of 180 degree. And x1 of 1 and x1 of 1 in uh, two received uh, uh, streams will have the zero degree phase difference. So, this is for one stream and this is for another stream. What I can see. So, this is about open loop uh, spatial multiplexing with CDD or a cyclic delay diversity, right? So next one is the closed loop spatial multiplexing. So closed loop means there is a feedback from receiver to the transmitter side. Okay. And uh, that is known as channel state information. So the receiver will give a feedback to the transmitter about the quality of the channel. Okay. So this is the closed loop uh, spatial multiplexing. What I can say. See code book. This is taken from Precoder, right? So different uh, streams will be applied to the precoder matrix. Then output of that will be applied to antenna ports, transmit one, transmit and so on. And it is the is the MIMO, and it is the receiver side, receiver one, receiver two. Post processing will be done. Then see here channel estimator, code book selection, the code book. Then there will be decoding, right? And from code book selection only the input is fed back to this code book selection. PMI. Mm. So this is what I written in general. How we write the uh, that is uh, y to the power of zero of i to the y to the power of p minus one of i. Y is equal to w and xi. I think uh, we're telling about uh, uh, pre coding. I said right. Y of i is equal to w i into xi. This works. W i is the pre coding matrix, and this is the transmitted. Uh, this is the layer output, layer mapper. I think this is the code book concepts. From code book index, from each layer, what is the data? For code word one and code word two. Okay, this is all about uh, closed loop special multiplexing. Let us see some more uh, elaborate discussion on this in the subsequent classes. Okay, then multi-user MIMO. So multi-user MIMO is what uh, <coughs> multiple antennas at the base station. So it will be supporting the multiple users, right? So K users, you each user having one antenna each. So these are user equipment 1, user equipment 2, and so on up to user equipment k, right? So this is the expression, mathematical expression is yk is equal to hk wx plus n. So k is the number of users, uh, w is a pre-coding matrix for all the users. Okay. And that, and just it is some features of multi-user memo and uh, single user MIMO. So, multi user MIMO means base station can communicate separately with multiple users in case of multi user MIMO. But in case of uh, single user MIMO, base station communicates with single user. Okay. So, this uh, multi user MIMO provides capacity claim, gain, and a single user MIMO provides increased data rate for single user. Key advantage is of multi user MIMO multiplexing gain and single user MIMO it is reducing the interference. Okay, data throughput is